Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. To begin the tribulation, Revelation chapter 6. And I saw when the Lamb, Jesus Christ, opened one of the seals. And you remember chapter 5, he took the book that had the seven seals. So he's got the book in his hand, and he starts peeling off the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. God. One of the four beasts saying, we don't know what the order of these beasts are. Come and see. So John is in heaven. The book has been taken by Jesus Christ. The seals are being peeled off by Jesus Christ. And John is standing there. Now, we'll see the four beasts speak to John and say, come and see. Do the other three continue to holy, holy, holy? And I, this is John, saw, behold, a white horse. Now you write down the comparisons of 6 to with Revelation 19. And you will find that these are not the same writer of the horse. Because people will proclaim that this is Jesus Christ coming. I've even heard it. I've heard some of those messages. And I saw, behold, a white horse. Okay, Dan Grant, both white. So the world is waiting for an imitation of Jesus Christ to come. They're not waiting for the Christ. And all your fairy tale stories have got that white horse coming with the prince. And Satan is called the prince of this world. And he that sat on him, now we don't know who the he is, but he that sat on him had a bow. There's no arrow. He is going to bring peace. The, the, the turn it to the Antichrist coming. The ruler of the world, the one that they're looking for, is going to give what they want. Peace. That's what the Pope has been praying and, and talking to all the world leaders as he travel around this globe. Peace, peace, peace. United Nations, peace, peace, peace. The presidents, peace, peace, peace. The, the, the world leaders, peace, peace, peace. Here he is. But Jesus said to the disciples, My peace I leave unto you, not as the world gives you peace. The, peace, the world will give you peace, it's just not everlasting. But a bow and no arrow. And we'll see by the next horse that it is peace. And a crown. Well, when you check out Jesus Christ in Revelation 19, that crown has an S after it. This one is a crown. He is a ruler. King, president, whatever the world wants, he will be. If he's a religious person, he has a crown that speaks of, I am the Almighty Father, that Jesus spoke about in John 17. The victor of Christ. The only one that doesn't wear any kind of headband is the President of the United States. 
and a crown was given unto him. So they, they make him a ruler. He comes with his bow, and then he's given a crown to reign. So I guess Americans should get used to it. I guess a king is coming back. That upset America. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now that's kind of interesting. Because in verse 4 we're going to see that he's this is peace. And with peace he's going to conquer. And the Bible tells us that he is going to make a deal with Israel. And then in the midst of the week, he's going to break that deal. That pack. So this is the first horse. He's white. He brings peace. And when he, Jesus, and notice how Jesus is in charge of this. Though the Holy Spirit is gone with the church. Though the church is in heaven. You still got a people called God's people, the Jews. And the one that came on to his own is in charge of all this. When he had opened the second seal, and I heard the second beast, I don't know if this is the order of giving it chapter 4, <coughs> you go back and see, but the second beast said, or say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. What the first horse on white, the first horseman on the white horse brought. The red horseman takes it away. The peace is very short lived. It's between the first and second seal. That's how long the peace lasts. From the earth. So it's earth wide, worldwide. World War. There is yet at least one more World War coming. Now whether we go into World War 3 before the Tribulation, 4 or 5, there is one coming after the Tribulation. Or during the Tribulation, I mean. After the Rapture. There's a World War coming. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto them a great sword. So there you go. The peace is coming, but it's not going to stay for long. How long is it between 2 and 3 and 4? Not very long. And men are going to kill each other. Under the reign of Satan. And when he had opened... Ah, excuse me, my nose is running. When he had opened the third seal... I heard, now this is Jesus again, open it. I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I, John, beheld and lo, a black horse. Black beauty, I guess. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And you've seen the, the Lady Liberty in the courtroom, Justice, holding that, the, that balance. There's a pan on one side and there's a pan on the other side. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say. Now that's either God or Jesus Christ on the throne. A measure of wheat for a penny. That's a day's wage. That parable that Jesus told about those that went in the, in the guy's in his vineyard to work for a day. Every man got his penny. Oh, you know, they only worked an hour and we thought we were going to get more than a penny. And three measures of barley for a penny. I understand barley bread is terrible. I never had it. At least I don't think I've had it. A measure of wheat. That's not much. For a penny. Day's wage. So one day you're going to get a measure of wheat for your money. And the next day you're going to get three measures of barley for your money. And see that thou hurt, see that thou hurt not the oil. 
That would be olive oil for the anointing. And the wine, the grapes. Olive and grapes. Don't you dare hurt them. Olive's a type of Holy Spirit. Grapes, the Bible says, wine, the new wine, is a type of blood of Jesus Christ. It cheereth God and man. Touch, my, not, touch not my anointed, do them no harm. Seven. So we got peace, war, famine. And I'm not going to be there because I'm a Christian. I'm a born-again Christian. And your church may teach you're going to go through this mess. But Jesus Christ, I've already said that we're going to be in chapter 5. We're going to be in heaven singing with the beast and singing with the elders. Glory to God, I've been redeemed by the blood. I ain't going through this mess. I ain't looking for these characters. And when he had opened the fourth seal... I heard the voice, God again, Jesus Christ, John, I heard the, the fourth beast say, come and see. And I, you ever wonder where John is seeing these things? There's Jesus Christ. He's got the book in his hand. He's peeling off the seal. The beasts are around the throne and say, John, come and see. Where? How's he seeing this? Is he looking down and, and seeing this in... Is it pictured out in, in glory? Wouldn't it be great? Uh, and I'm not going to do so justice to heaven, but you know, the devil counterfeits everything that God has, right? To, to the ruin. Devil counterfeits love and all that. Wouldn't it be great if there was some kind of vision in heaven that we could see the Bible for real? That maybe, you know. Satan has people put Halloween costumes and stuff like that. But can you see maybe John the Baptist actually baptizing those people he baptized, the, the, the 12 disciples? And I'm not talking about a theatrical event. I'm talking about it's actually happening as it happened in the Bible. I, I can't even explain how it would come because I don't want to say television. I don't want to say movies. I don't want to say skits. But I'm saying how would you like to see the Bible played out? in realness as it happened i think what was the old saying the old program we used to have in school you are there and they would do a program they would they would you know put us there in the war or whatever they were doing that moment wouldn't it be great if it was actually played out by the actual men can you imagine going to the mountain of transfiguration there's peter james and john standing around you with moses and elijah and there's jesus christ and you're sitting at the base of that mountain watching it and you're not asleep can you imagine if you can watch again seeing Jesus being crucified for our sins and being nailed to that cross? Wouldn't that really give you the goosebumps that you've... I, I don't know. I just don't know. But, but I'm saying that because John is seeing this and it's never happened yet. And I don't want to say television. But I just wonder. Come and see, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. That's sickening color, you know, puke. And someone said, you look pale, that means you're not doing well. And his name, this horse has a name. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name, the horse's name, that sat on him, the rider, was death and hell. Followed him. His name is Death and Hell Follows. Now this is that character you know you see in that black gown. You don't see his face. He travels around. He's got a sickle or whatever that thing is called. But the Bible says he's on a horse. And what follows this guy is hell. Now the first one. What follows him is worldwide peace. Yay! The second one. What follows him is war. Pain. Killing. Oh. The next horse follows in famine. I'm hungry. This one here is death. And then they go to hell. How's that? 
At least a man has a chance to die today and go to heaven by Jesus Christ. Follow him. And power was given unto them. Death and hell. The horseman and the one that's following him. Power over the fourth part of the earth. A quarter of the earth. Not just Palestine. The earth. The planet round earth. I don't know why they're fighting today saying again that the earth is flat. I don't know why that's coming to be. But they're idiots. A quarter of the earth. You know when another time this happened? In your Bible? In Genesis. Genesis 4. One quarter of the population was killed by Cain. Isn't that a quinky dinky? To kill with sword. Now this is the, this is outside more to addition to the war and four. And with war. Because and with hunger, there's the famine. There's gonna be a double war. There's gonna be a double famine. And with death itself. And with the beast of the earth. Now that's comical. Let's save the whales. Well, the whales are going to kill you. Oh, that's a nice little puppy there. He's so sick. His master treats him wrong. And then he's going to turn on you and bite the heck out of you. That little kitty cat that got hit by the car you want to take care of is going to give you rabies. When we go further now into Revelation, the animals are going to go crazy. Animals that man has been saving today is going to turn on man. Get that. Peter will be upset with their savior or savings. And when he had opened the fifth seal, oh, he ran out of the beast. Jesus opened the fifth seal. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain. What's it say? The Bible is going to be in the tribulation period and people are going to die for it. There is killings we've seen verses 3 through 8. And some of those people are going to be killed by the word of God. It does not change with Satan, does it? He is still angry with those few that will preach the word of God. And they will be a very few in the tribulation. The word of God will be preached and taught in the tribulation period. There it is. And for the testimony which they held. What's the testimony? They're Jews. The number one marked enemy of the tribulation period. They need a Bible. Because how are they going to know how to do the sacrifices and do everything they need to do unless they got the law? And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth, talking in the present? Lord, those people that killed us. When are you going to have revenge? We read in the scripture. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Lord, when are you going to do it? And they are in glory. How do you know these are Jews living like the Old Testament? Have you ever read the book of Psalms and David? The man that loved God with all his heart. Lord, will you get my enemies and kill them? Lord, send them down to the pit. Bring them down to destroy them. We can't say that today as Christians. Man, when David prayed to God over his enemies, man, he smoking. And that's what these men are doing right now. Lord God, go get them. Read the book of Psalms with David's writings. That's almost like David writing. 
and white robes were given unto every one of them. So we will, you see, over and over the white robes. Even though you, if you're a worldly Christian, you will get a white robe. That part of the drawings and pictures that people draw of people in heaven is true. White robes. The harps, as I did a hymn today, no. Read the Bible. That goes to the elders and or the beast. Every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest. I would assume God saying it. That they should rest yet a little season. Unto their fellow servants. They are serving. They are working. They are doing. Fellow servants was used by Paul to say these are people that love God and doing right. Also, and their brethren, Jews, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. This is the tribulation period. More people are going to die. Jews are going to die. You are waiting for the last Jew to die as the church waited for the last Christian to get saved. But for the Jew, they know it's seven years. Or they could find out it's seven years by the Bible and Daniel's writing. We have no idea as a Christian. And I beheld when Jesus, he, had opened the sixth seal. Now we are at the end of the seventh year. This matches the end, the seventh year. And eternity. Open the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake. And we'll see that earthquake later again. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The last year, the last period of the of the tribulation, it's darkness. There is no light. The heavens don't shine. And the moon became as blood. It's kind of interesting because the sun goes black and the moon does go to blood. How do they know the moon is blood? And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. Revelation 12. A third of them at Revelation 12. The rest of them. You talk about meteorites? This says the stars are going to hit the earth. Now let me ask you a question about the scientists today in your space effort. Well, those stars are billions and capillions to tatillions years away. And it would take men for a twillion, quatillion years. It takes forever for a starlight to hit the earth. God says they're all going to hit the earth one day. Now, either those stars are a lot closer than we think they are. Or when those stars hit the earth, God's going to put them in retro speed, light speed, as your movies say, and they're going to boom. You're talking about massive speed. And God can do it. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, no more good, when she is shaken by a mighty wind. You know, when the wind comes, blows that fig tree, well... Some of the figs fall down to the ground. Well, that's what's going to happen with those stars. Heaven, then the heaven departed as a scroll. Now, we see this after the millennium. When it's rolled together, in every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So the whole earth is going to be shaken up. Unless that millennium, if this is going into the millennium, when Jesus comes, he is, is going to tear up the solar system and the earth and everything. That's a possibility. Every mountain and island moved out of places, and the Bible suggests that the fact is that the entire earth during the millennium is going to be flat. I mean, round. No mountains, no valleys. And yet the greatest point on this earth will be Jerusalem. It will be a mountain. Could it also mean that like, all the continents are going to come crashing back together? Probably. Because they were divided, we say, probably with the big leg, big leg. The earth is going to probably go, 
we will probably see the Earth what it was like when Adam had it. The Bible of the Smith learned with the, with the garden, it was only one river that's, that went into five heads. The Earth is going to probably go back the way it was. I mean, listen, this whole, we got right now above our heads. If you could, in your backyard, make a spaceship, you have the ability, and you say, well, I want to go to the moon on my own. I don't care what the government said. you got to watch out because a flying above our heads a whole bunch of spacecraft put there by our space agencies. There are broken satellites, broken rockets, all kinds of things. It's called space garbage, and they got to map it every time they send something up there. Well, Christ has got to clean all that mess up. Christ has got to, if we went to the moon, if we went to the moon, I don't believe we did, if we went to the moon, God's got to remove that crap. We gotta take that crap that we've been putting on Mars. We gotta take that crap of that, that thing that's circling around the the, the 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 earth right now, the space station, and all those satellites. We gotta get rid of that crap. We gotta get rid of Hubble. Jesus has gotta clean all that sinful waste and garbage up. All man is doing is polluting. And the kings of the earth. So there are rulers and the great men rich famous and the rich men money and the chief captains military and the mighty men the men the army of under the the chief men, captains and every bondman slaves has not been ended Every free man that was not a slave. There's are classes of people in the tribulation period. Hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. They go running for the bomb shelters. But it's not a bomb shelter. It's a Jesus shelter. Because when everything goes dark. There's a light at the end of the tun tunnel. It's getting closer and closer and closer. And it's the one sitting on a white horse coming. King of kings and Lord of lords. And we know exactly who he is. We just couldn't get rid of his preachers. Verse 9. The world does know who Jesus is. And that last final moment they will regret. Not knowing Jesus. If you know what I mean. They know who he is. But they just don't know who he is. And said to the mountains rocks. Fall on us. They want the rocks to kill them. Even Jonah said to the, to the men, kill me. We ain't got the guts to kill ourselves. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. That's judgment. Watch. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? That is when he divides the sheep from the goats. He has come on his horse. He is devouring. His eyes are lighting up. And judgment happens. Who shall be able to stand? The sheep that helped the nation of Israel. Those are the ones who are going to stand. And they don't even have the idea according to what Matthew wrote us. So we've seen the seven years through the seals. What time frame do these seals are? I have no idea. But it's the seven years. And we've got more to come forward. But you will see these trumpets, these seals, the vial. You'll see they do line up in certain ways. But to lay it out, I guess we've got to watch it from heaven as far as the church is concerned. But this world is going to have its leadership, it's going to have its workers, it's going to have its military when Jesus Christ comes. And when Jesus Christ comes, they're going to be afraid. Better preach the gospel to them now. And let them be fear of God to get wisdom. Then get the fear of God when he comes and get damnation. This is why the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Because we don't know when he's coming. 